I was born in Iran. Iran is a country of uh, multiple cultures and languages and religions. Iran is located somewhere in the Middle East and neighboring several countries. Very much contrary to what we have in North America that the differences between Canadian and American really is not much, except the fact that you are better than them. <laughs> in, in the Middle East, normally, the countries, they make sure that their identity is very much, you know, distinguished from one another. And to that extent, you know, you don't want to call one Iranian, you know, Arab or Turk or something. That's not very good. Or I believe the other way around is not that good as well. Iran itself, as I said, it has a, a multi, uh, we have multiple you know, races and languages and dialects. And my dad, being an army man, you know, I, we, were, we were moving to different parts, and you know, I was born in a city in the southwest of Iran called Desful. Although I spoke the language and you know, I knew the dialect fluently, but yet they never accepted us as one of them. And we never accepted them as one of us. Then it happened that in 93, I moved to Dubai. When I went to Dubai, my differences with the people of Dubai was even more. You know, they were definitely, I mean, they had a different nationality, the language was Arabic, and you know, the culture and music was different. And at this time, if I would run to somebody from this fool, I would consider them as one of us, and I would consider the people of Dubai, sorry, as one of them. Then in 97, I moved to Canada. When I came to Canada, the differences were even more. At this time, you know, Canadians are primarily white and Christian, and the music and culture was even more different. So at this time, if I would run into somebody from this fool or Dubai, I would consider them as one of us, and I would consider the people of Canada as them. Then I started to think, at what point would it come that we consider all as just us, and there is no them? Probably when the Martians attack us. <laughs> as a matter of fact, this concept has been used by some politicians that at the time of you know, uh, division in their community or country, they create crisis from outside so that the community and the country unites. And stats shows that presidents, they have higher chance of being reelected at the time of war. But do we really need the Martians to attack us before we come to that conclusion? It is really sad when we wait for the circumstances to force us to realize that we have more similarities than differences. And actually, we really don't need to wait for the Martians to come. We have a lot of crises that we can deal with at this time. Some of the things some, such as climate change, human rights, bigotry, homophobia, poverty, diseases, women's rights, racism, and the list goes on and on. The concept is that if we realize what is the priority, it is like sometimes you know, two, two men drowning at the same time, but they are fighting each other. Sometimes it just looks like that. We have a lot of serious issues ahead of us, but we are disregarding those, and we pay attention to some smaller things. When in Canada, I realized that, you know, I want to make this my home country. You know, I'm not going to be going anywhere else. And how can I get that sense of belonging? And then, when I thought about it, I had to make some changes. But those changes, at the time, it translated to me being non-patriotic, non-loyal, and not faithful to my Iranian heritage. And all these words, they have very good connotation to them, patriotism, loyalty. But then that made me think, who am I? What is my identity? Simply because I was born there? And then I came to this realization that identity is primarily made of these two parts. Some is inherited and some is created. The inherited part is, there are two components to it. One is the fixed inherited identity. Something like gender, nationality, history, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation. These are the things that you are born with. Really, we haven't done anything about them. So we cannot be proud nor ashamed of them. But the other one are the uneducated, I call it uneducated inherited identity, where we act like monkeys. 
And I use this force because I want to insult everybody a little bit. <laughs> and one of them is culture and value system. We have been told forever that you should be proud of your culture. But I was born there. If I was born somewhere else, I would have another culture. Shall I be proud of it just because I was born there? What about if I don't agree with some of the things? I believe as people of this planet, we need to change and we need to start thinking and reevaluating everything. We do that in other things. We do that in our businesses in life. I don't know why we don't do that when it comes to some of the basic things that we use all the time. Somebody said some time ago that, Mohammed, you have lost your culture. I replied, yes, thank you for noticing it. <laughs> I think for myself. I decide who I am, not my circumstances. Don't take me wrong, I love the Iranian food and music, not the dance as much. <laughs> but, and I didn't, and I don't necessarily go and inherit the Canadian culture. I decide what is right, what is wrong, and I do accordingly. That said, as I learn more, you know, I keep changing my culture and value system as appropriate. And I believe we should encourage people to do so. We should encourage them to change and reevaluate. But the other part of the uneducated culture, sorry, uneducated inherited identity is ideology and religion. Has it ever happened to you to just occur to you to see, you know, normally when we are born in a family, we just adopt that religion? And we just think, oh my God, that's good that you know I was born in this family, that I'm going to end up in heaven. If I was born in the other family, I would adopt the other religion, I would end up to somewhere else. <laughs> Which sometimes it brings me to, you know, to this realization, how many heavens are out there? Can I get a day pass and just camp around from one to the other and decide which one I want to go to? Which one gives me the best offer? But anyway, <laughs> taking pride in our identities and you know, the inherited identity is simply doesn't make sense. You know, and we should really start changing. This recipe of change, oh, sorry, change is the recipe for improvement. We cannot just do whatever the previous generations did. The other part of the identity, as I mentioned earlier, is <clears throat> created identity. Created identity is obviously something that you choose and you can change. I am a physical therapist by profession and I do run. I can change at any time. I chose these two and I can change them at any time. Have you ever seen, for example, the physios, they fight the non-physios? Or the runners, they fight the cyclists? <laughs> you know, the created identity is something that brings us together. When I go to a physio or runners you know, group, I really could care less what is their gender or race or ethnicity or sexual orientation. I just connect with them in that level. But most of the wars are happening because of the ethnicity and the cultural and you know, you know, racial differences. And this is the part that we claim to be a smart human being, but we act like animals. You know, again, this is amazing. I know that the things that I'm talking about is exactly opposite of what you have been told or we have been told in general. We cannot afford to do whatever our previous generation did and expect to improve. As Einstein said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing expecting different result. That's not gonna happen. Identity is supposed to identify us, not to divide us. Pride is for achievements, not for what we have inherited. You can be happy about the fact that you're happy, you're, you're, you were born healthy, but you cannot be proud of it. You know, the fact that I was born brown, I'm okay with that. And the fact that they became more good looking, you know, I'm very happy about it. <laughs> but there is nothing to be proud of it. <laughs> that said, I'm not happy that I have a big nose. <laughs> but I'm not ashamed of it. I take pride in my six pack. Trust me, I do have. But this is my achievement. I did not inherit this one.
My dad had a big tummy. <laughs> I would have been happier if I had a higher IQ, if I inherited one. Then I didn't have to come back to this notes all this frequent. <laughs> but I'm not ashamed of it. At the end, we cannot take pride nor shame in our inherited identity. And it just doesn't make sense. Now, what happens if we take pride in our identity? As an Iranian, for example, in Iran, as I said, we take a huge pride in our old history and nationality. So, as I said, if you call an Iranian Arab or Turk, they would get really mad at you. And the other way is true as well. So, this kind of identity uh, makes walls, not bridges. We hate the Greek because 2,500 years ago, they attacked us. <laughs> yes, when we take pride in identity in that fashion, we carry the hates of the past, which translates to wars of present and future, such as the ethnic wars and the religious wars that we see all around. I hate the Greek, but it's because they took the recipe for baklava. <laughs> baklava is Iranian. <laughs> I mean it. <laughs> Remember, war happens between two parties. People of the same party help each other to come up. There is no such a thing as those people. It is all us. Some of us are black, some white, some brown and hairy. Some of us were born male, some female. Some are straight, some gay. We have different ethnicities and nationalities, and so be it. Some of us, we are rapists, criminal, child molesters, and terrorists, but most of us, we are good people. Some of us struggle with mental and physical disabilities, and some of us have never had the opportunity to grow to our best. We live in different places, do different jobs, work at different teams and departments. But it is just us. There is no such a thing as those people. When we start thinking as it is us, it brings the, with it the sense of helping each other, cooperation, and lifting each other up. As soon as we think of it as those people, it brings with this competition, fight, and hate. But how to get over this feeling, us, feeling of us versus, you know, those people? Well, this doesn't work like this, that you can wake up in the morning and just, uh, you know, say, as of now, you know, I'm going to change. That's not how it works. Emotions are the byproduct of the reality. You have to change something to your reality so that your emotions change. So some of the things that we should do, one is, the most important, I would say, is education. You don't have to tolerate people when you understand them. As a physio, some time ago I had this patient that when he came in, he seemed a little bit difficult to deal with. But then after I talked to him, I realized that he was suffering from an anxiety. And that was his anxiety that uh, got the best of him. Another one, a police officer, friend of mine, he said that you know, he picked up this guy that he was drunk, you know, and he had done that several times. And then he realized, you know, once you know, he had told him that he was, as a child, sexually molested for a lot of years by one of the family members, which had left him with no dignity. Another thing is, there are studies that they show when you get to know people, there are 93% chance of you liking them. So if you don't like somebody, get to know them. And if it doesn't work, maybe you want to know them more. Actually, I think this is the secret about the marriages that they last long. <laughs> <laughs> Another one is empathy. Empathy will help us to think that it is us, there is no those people. Have you ever thought, you know, if you don't like somebody, if you put yourself in their shoes, if you were born as in a different gender, with a different sexual orientation, in a different race, in a different ethnicity, different country, different language, different culture, what would happen? It helps us to feel that way, that it is just us. On the other hand, if you run into some people that are more discriminative, racist, misogynist, or suffer from superiority, superiority syndrome, you don't have to hate them. 
you have to try to educate them as much as possible. Often it is the lack of education and information. But in the meantime, to keep in mind that not everybody has the ability, the mental ability to change. And that is the sad part. Or sometimes it just takes longer. You don't have to hate them nor fight them. Fight is not the answer. And I'm not sure why in this culture we have come up with this thing that fight you know, cancer, fight cold, fight terrorism, you know, fight poverty. Fight is not the answer. When you have a disease, you treat it. And every treatment starts with a diagnosis. And every diagnosis, you start it with a question, why it happened? And I'm not sure why we focus on that fight and we consider it as a sign of being strong. As far as I'm concerned, fighting is a sign of lack of civilization. But what happens when you take your identity to an extreme? I have to just tell this quickly in here. In Iran, Tehran is the capital, and people of Tehran, you know, they feel that they are simply the best, you know. This happens very frequently. So that concept of supremacism exists everywhere. We have it in Tehran, we have it in Mumbai, and I'm positive we have it everywhere else. And some people, they said, hey, I can chug a beer just in one shot, you know, and that, brings them that feel, I'm feeling that you know, they are just better than you. <laughs> but in Tehran, because of that feeling that they have, it just forced me that I went and wrote a blog that the title was as such. You're Einstein, so what? I'm from Tehran. <laughs> I have been just bored into goodness. I don't need anything else. And you know, sometimes some people, they may think that, OK, so they feel that way about other people. The reality is not as such. Even among themselves, if you ask, because they focus on the identity. Of course, when I say that, I mean, you know, some of the people of Tehran, not necessarily you know, everybody. But you know, then they start thinking, so how, how many generations have you been in Tehran? Then after that, so which part of Tehran do you live? And then how much money do you make? <laughs> what kind of job do you do? Who do you know? You know, so because they look for the differences and they find them. And they divide themselves. But then what happens when we take our identity to an extreme? Well, you will fit into a small group away from the mass. Brings you warmth and sense of belonging among a few, leaving you feeling cold and disconnected to others. Gives you a sense of stability, which is the exact opposite of freedom. Brings you a close circle of friends which translates to developing a closed circle of thoughts. Brings you support, preventing you from getting stronger. Gives you agreement among the group, not different perspectives. At the end, becoming closed-minded. When you focus on your identity too far, that it takes you to divide you from others, this is what's going to happen. At the beginning, you're going to make a wall with a small group of people within it. After some time, you will find some more differences. And you will make a, another wall with a small group of those people in it and some left behind. As a human being, being unique individuals, at the end, you will end up with a nice big wall around you all alone. Thank you.